Let's play a game, you and me. The rules are simple. We each make one of two choices. Either to work with the other player, that's called cooperating, or work against the other player, that's called defecting. We each make one of those two choices, and neither of us knows what the other player chooses. That gives us four different possible outcomes with four different payouts. If we both choose to cooperate, we both get three points. Well done. If we both choose to defect, we both get one point. Here's the interesting part. If one of us defects while the other cooperates, the defector gets five points while the cooperator gets zero. Now everyone knows the rules and everyone knows everyone knows the rules. You wanna play? I have my choice. Do you have yours? Ready? Sorry, I chose to defect. Meaning if you chose to cooperate with me, not only is our trust a little broken, but I get five points while you get nothing. If you chose to defect also, well, that's not so great for either of us, we each get one point. If you wanna play again, just rewind the video. I promise I'll make the same move since it's the best strategy. It's always better for me to defect regardless of your choice. In fact, that's the best strategy for both players. But how can defecting be the best move for both players? Each of us ending up with one point is clearly worse than both of us cooperating and each ending up with three points. Let's look at this game rationally, meaning you're playing to win. Let's say you know I'm going to choose to cooperate. What would your best move be? Knowing I'm cooperating, your payoffs are between three if you also cooperate or five if you defect. So what's the better move? Defecting. You'll simply earn more points. Now say you know I'm going to choose to defect. What would your best move be now? Knowing I'm defecting, your payoffs are between zero if you cooperate and one if you defect. So what's the better move in this case? Defecting. Again, you'll simply earn more points. No matter what your opponent chooses, it's better to defect. This is a dominant strategy, and in this case, a Nash equilibrium. That's when neither player can benefit by changing from their current strategy. And this is so frustrating, since it's a setting where two rational individuals, both acting in their own interests, don't cooperate, even though it appears it would be in their best interest to do so. It makes you want to lean to the other player and whisper, hey, just cooperate and so will I. We'll both be better off that way than if we stick to this so-called best strategy. I had a really interesting experience playing this game in college when I took a mathematical game theory course. Our professor really liked The Prisoner's Dilemma, so much so that one day we were all paired up and asked to play against each other for extra credit. We had the two usual choices, cooperate or defect, and the payout structure was something like this. If both players cooperated, each received a bonus point in the class. If you both defect, neither of you gets the bonus point. Finally, if one defects while the other cooperates, the defector gets two bonus points while the cooperator loses a point in the class. Everyone knew all the rules. Everyone knew everyone knew all the rules. We had been studying game theory all semester and everyone knew what the best possible strategy was. What do you think most people chose? Almost everyone, including myself, chose to cooperate, knowing full well we would have been better off individually not doing so. Now, maybe this wasn't a perfect experiment. One or two points probably wouldn't have affected anyone's overall grade, so maybe we didn't care enough to play perfectly. Also, when we played, each pair had to go up to the front of the room, and pretty much everyone could see how things went down, so we could see who all the jerks were. Despite this, I still find it interesting that even knowing how we should play the game, the best strategy, many of us chose not to do so. The Prisoner's Dilemma makes you think about what other mathematical brain twisters are out there. If you like those kind of things, click the video on the screen. This is one of my favorite mathematical mind benders. I'll see you in that one.